Last year, my good friend Xyla Foxlin and I launched a Christmas tree to 300 feet in the air in the name of Christmas spirit. This year, we wanted to do it again, but a little bit differently. So while Xyla focuses on the booster and the star, I'm gonna focus on Christmas tree lights and electronics, and specifically filming the tree. <laughs> If you've followed this account for the last few months, you know I'm on this personal mission to capture the best footage that I can of the rockets I fly. I built a camera spinner for a small rocket, and then I built a camera spinner for a larger rocket, both to get stable footage on the way up. And I'm kind of willing to go to any length to capture really cool shots from these rockets. So relatedly, this video is sponsored by Insta360, which we'll talk about a little bit later. There's this holy grail of shots that you can get from a rocket, and I call it the third person apogee shot. So on most high power rockets, if you're flying a camera, it's either looking up, out, or down. At least with the down looking shot, you can see some of what's going on with the rocket, but this isn't a perspective any of us are really familiar with. I want something that shows the whole rocket in the air at Apogee, and ideally in this case, I wanna see that whole 40 pound tree. In order to capture this shot without a lot of complex attitude control, we're gonna work with Insta360 on this to use their X3 camera to capture some type of third person shot here. The plan here is fairly simple. We're gonna take one of their X3 cameras, mount it on a quarter 20 rod, and then near Apogee, we're gonna shoot that that rod out from the tree to capture the shot looking back. After the fact, we can use the Insta360 Studio app in post-production to frame and crop the shot we need. This is the X3 from Insta360, and in my quest to capture the best footage I can of the rockets I fly, it stands out as one of the most flexible options. Obviously, footage from the flight is great, but it's also been helpful for capturing footage on the ground of an entire workshop or of a launch with a reaction shot. The camera captures 5.7K video in 360 degrees with two half-inch sensors, so you can crop in any shot without losing quality. Lots of editing can be done on the fly with your phone, and for more precise keyframing, the Studio app makes this pretty easy. The the ability to crop in on any shot in any direction is great, but the camera also has some other fun features like bullet time, time lapses, and I'm pretty stoked about this thing that they call Horizon Lock, which we're going to talk about a little bit later in the video. Like I said, we're going to mount this camera to the end of the quarter 20 rod, and because of the invisible selfie stick mode, the rod will get stitched out in post. We're also going to toss a parachute on that rod and a release mechanism on there so we can get the whole thing back safely. These cameras are really tough, but maybe let's try to not slam them into the desert floor. All right, so we've got our camera on a stick, we've got some parachutes, and now we need a way to eject it. We're gonna take one of my AVA flight computers and use a few of the servo outputs to trigger the release of multiple cameras at various points in flight. We're gonna talk about how that happens later, but let's design and build this release mechanism first. I always start my designs on paper in a notebook, just scratching things out. CAD is a really powerful tool, but you almost never want to start there because nothing can beat the flexibility of just flipping the page and restarting. I started with the idea that we'd mount the rod inside a carbon fiber tube, and then we needed a way to shoot it out. Metal springs were my first choice. By tossing a few of those springs at the bottom of the carbon fiber tube, we could yeet the quarter inch rod and camera out of the tube, but these turned out to not quite be strong enough. I really want the camera to like shoot off of the tree. So then I had another idea. What if we let that quarter 20 rod hang out the back of the carbon fiber tube, and we put a plunger with a rubber band around it. It's basically like a slingshot, and you can adjust the number of rubber bands at the back to control how hard it shoots the camera off. Then I sketched out a release mechanism built around a nine gram servo, which when it gets out of the way would, uh, Wait, no, that's gonna release the rubber band. That doesn't work at all. This is why we sketch things out on paper first. I flipped the page, moved to V2, and we try again. In this version, we keep the rubber band plunger, but the servo holds onto a pin that's attached to the quarter 20 rod. And when it's time to release, the servo gets out of the way and the rod is able to shoot out. This was a solid enough idea for me to hop into CAD and start actually designing the parts. I designed the plunger, then the rubber band retainer, a pin to release the rod, and finally a mount for the servo with some holes so that we could zip tie this to a tree branch. I started printing out parts for the prototype design, and at that point, it was time for Xyla and I to head out and grab a tree.
Shopping for a Christmas tree that you want to fly is a little different than shopping for one that you want to have in your house. The things we looked for this year were the amount of floof in the tree, and we kind of wanted something that was a little bit taller. Once we found a tree that seemed to match the criteria we wanted, we purchased it, put it on a car, and we should have been all set. So the good news is that at this point, we have a tree. And the, the bad news is that, uh... <laughs> Last year's Christmas tree was 40 pounds without ornaments or the booster. This year's came in at significantly more than that, which does not bode well. As far as we could tell from all the footage last year, roughly 1,000 newtons of thrust on a 40 pound tree with four foot long fins is a stable-ish configuration. This year, our motor was a CTI M1060, which has slightly more thrust, which is good, and a longer burn time, which theoretically means we're just gonna go higher. That said, there is this one angle from last year's launch that's a little concerning. Oh. The tree from last year seems marginally stable at best. We lift off straight, pitch over a bit, and then somewhat stabilize. If that's a 40 pound tree, a 90 pound tree is going to make things a lot more difficult. We'll have more weight up front, which is good for stability, but we end up being much heavier which is bad. Once we realized how bad this might end up being, Xyla and a few friends ended up picking up a second Christmas tree that was a little bit smaller. You know what Christmas means to me? Buying your second Christmas tree in a Home Depot parking lot, uh, but this time you come prepared with a kitchen or a bathroom scale. <laughs> and while that was going on, I finished up building the camera ejection system and Christmas lights. I printed out parts for four more ejection mounts, and while putting them together, I realized that the nine gram servos weren't quite enough to hold back that spring loading. So using a lot of hot glue, as is tradition on this channel, uh, I really sketchily upgraded the servos to a larger size, which was able to hold back the rubber bands pretty well and eject the cameras successfully. I also broke one of the ejection mounts just a little bit, so we ended up with three functional ones, which I decided we should test out in sequence. Woo! Let's go! It was at this point, seeing how fast this ejected off the tree, that I realized we would probably want some good slow motion shots. So with my friends at Insta360, they hooked us up with a couple of their One RS cameras. These cameras are pretty sweet and they're actually modular, which means that while this camera can only shoot in one direction, you can actually get a second camera attachment and shoot in both directions. It's a totally modular system. Uh, and it's great for shooting slow motion footage. So I attached two of these to the ejection system. And this is probably a good time to talk about the logic of how these cameras get deployed and how we time all of those events. When a rocket passes Apogee, it's easy to detect that point by looking at when the velocity crosses from a positive number to a negative number. And you can just count up from there to know, you know, how many seconds past Apogee you are. But how do you know how many seconds before Apogee you are? If we want to eject these cameras slightly before we deploy the parachutes on this Christmas tree, how do we do that? Well, the simple way to do this is you can use Earth's gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. In a vacuum, any object in free fall will accelerate toward the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. That means that as soon as the motor burns out, neglecting drag, we can use that number to get a good guess at our future position and velocity. So if we're moving upward at 20 meters per second in free fall, but slowing down, we know that we're roughly two seconds away from Apogee. And that's how we do it here in the code. Each servo is commanded to release each camera after we pass certain speed milestones near Apogee. And while it won't be a perfect like two seconds before Apogee on the dot, it is certainly close enough for what we're doing here. So with the electronics good to go, the Christmas lights tested out and the rocket motor loaded, we headed out to my favorite place on earth, the Friends of Amateur Rocketry test site in Mojave, California. Far is a fantastic place to do this because while we were reasonably sure that the rocket would fly well, we're also basing that assumption off of two seconds of powered flight time from last year which is not a lot of seconds. So for something this experimental, a test site that focuses on liquid rockets and highly experimental stuff is the right place to go to. At the launch site, we focused on getting the electronics and cameras mounted, the lights attached, the booster section decorated, and of course, loaded up the star with about 10 grams of black powder. This year, Xyla focused on the booster and star for the tree, and while the booster is a similar design to last year, the star has a special surprise parachute in it. If you wanna learn more about that, Xyla has a whole video on this project as well, where she covers those things, and I have linked it right in the description below. Before this Christmas tree launches, you'll notice that there are a lot of custom ornaments on this tree, and this is probably a good time to tell you 
you a little bit more about them. As you can see, engineering is a whole lot of fun, but it's a lot of fun when everybody is welcome in it. And so that's why this year for Secret Santa, I don't know what. Secret Santa. <laughs> um, don't forget to put your address in the YouTube comments and I'll send you press. <laughs> Engineering is a whole lot of fun, but it's extra fun when everybody is welcome in it. And so that's why for this year's season's eatings, we've decided to partner up with Reinvented Magazine, whose goal is to inspire the next generation of girls and women in science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, Xyla has a lot of personal history with Reinvented, and uh, we're really excited to partner with them for this. So these are wonderful ornaments designed by Miss Foxland herself. We're flying a ton of them on this tree. We got them made, we're gonna fly them. You can get them. We might refilm this bit at a later time. Okay, I'm taking over from here because we did not do a great job getting these lines out at the launch site. If you want a flight-proven Christmas tree ornament, if you want a Seasons Yeetings tree patch, if you want a piece of the tree itself, links to all those things are in the description down below, and by getting those, you support a great organization. Now, back to the video. With all of that covered about the ornaments, we brought the Christmas tree out to the launch rail, raised it up, got all of the cameras and avionics turned on and prepared, and of course got the Christmas lights going. And once everyone at the launch site was feeling merry and bright, Xyla counted down and hit the button. Two, one, season's eating! The sight of a Christmas tree launched on an M motor is always going to be a stunning one, but I would say this was a particularly stunning launch given how non-vertical the flight went. Uh, really, really putting the missile in mistletoe this year. The stability assumptions we had made based on last year's flight did not hold up. Unfortunately, this also meant that the cameras which were planned to eject at very slow speeds near Apogee like last year ejected as we were hurtling to the side at about 95 miles an hour. So we did not get that beautiful Apogee deployment shot, but luckily, with some good thinking on the part of Miss Foxlin, we had a few other cameras on board to capture the flight. The Insta360 X3 gets this insane angle as the tree flies through the air, and because of the invisible selfie stick feature, we actually do get that third person shot that we were looking for. You know, it's just that, that the tree is moving a lot faster and a lot less vertical while we're getting that shot. Also, because of the horizon lock mode on the camera, you get a pretty good sense of how far this thing arced over the air as we digitally stabilize around the horizon of Earth. My favorite part about this, though, is that we still got a parachute out, just slightly after Apogee. But we were able to get the tree back to the ground at a much less sporty speed than last year, and even though we broke a fin on landing, I would still consider it a pretty decent success. Also, for what it's worth, all of the deployed cameras came out and fell to the ground under parachutes. Each one of those shoots deployed and got the camera to the ground fairly safely. So as we mentioned before, we've got all of these ornaments from the Christmas tree, all of them designed by Xyla Foxlin, and they're going to be signed by Xyla and myself as well. And if you want one of these, and you want to support a great cause with Reinvented Magazine, the link to that is in the description down below, as well as a link to the actual parts from the tree. We're now sending out ornaments with parts from the flown tree and mission patches for the whole thing. So there's all sorts of stuff you can get down there. And one more time, if you haven't seen it already, Xyla has a great video covering some of the more tree-centric parts of the build, which I've also linked down below and you should definitely be checking out. I want to thank Xyla and all of our friends for flying out to do this ridiculous project again. I want to thank Reinvented Magazine for doing some really cool work, but also supporting this project and shipping out these ornaments. And I want to thank Insta360 for sponsoring today's video, sending us all of these cameras to fly on the Christmas tree knowing they might not come back great, and allowing us to get these shots that like straight up would not be possible without their cameras. Right now, Insta360 is also having a holiday sale, which you should check out using the link in the description down below. Thank you to you for watching. Thanks for your time. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Whatever you celebrate, I hope you have a good time. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.